Well, today we're talking about engorging in a feast. Wow. So uh, there's a guy that gets married. There's a guy that has a, a bought a field. There's all kinds of excuses why they can't come, and the, the king is upset about it. Mm. So that's what we're talking about today on HT Daily. You're listening to another episode of HC Daily, a daily devotional podcast that you can listen to at home or on the go. We believe that you can grow as much as you want to grow spiritually, and this podcast can be a part of your daily growth plan. So, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, or your favorite podcast app, we're glad you're here. Now, let's join our hosts, Jeff Forrester and Chris Zarbaugh in the studio. So, uh, yes, we're going to talk about it. Chris was asking me a question just as we finished the roll in there. Yeah. Um, so uh, we announced a couple days ago about some big changes with the Daily Bible yes, Guys. Yes, the Daily Bible Guys. Yeah. So we're coming up to, uh, we only have just a few episodes left, right? Yeah. Um, so we will finish on episode 160, I think is the 160 episodes since February, which is kind of cool, considering we only planned on doing just a few weeks. Right. Right. And yeah, uh, we really never <clears throat> designed to... To keep on going on this podcast, we just kept on doing it because, number one, it was fun. Right. And then, number two, uh, people gave us good feedback. Yeah, and you're one of my buddies, and this is one of the best ways for us to spend time together. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's true, It's too. amazing, man. You're just amazing. You're a great guy. I am so good. Yes. I exalt myself. Yes. And so <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not at others, other men, even as this uh, Tax co-host. Collector. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, we're not ceasing to do podcasts, daily devotional podcasts, right? That's not right. ending. No. We're just changing the brand. The brand is going from HC Daily to the Daily Bible Guys, yeah. right? So we'll be known as the Bible Guys. You can go to thebibleguys.com. We're going to archive the the, the the HC Daily ones, but uh, all the new subscriptions. But we'll be pretty clear about how to sign up for it. Yeah. And not only that, but to be quite honest, we also want uh, all of our listeners to share uh, yes. uh, the the new link and that that, that, that time will come that, that yep. ask will come and then also be prepared to perhaps engage with us because we'll actually be tossing out uh, questions that we want you to respond to yeah. so that we could actually interact uh, with our new format because we're going to change up the format a little bit absolutely I think it's gonna be a lot a lot of fun I think it'll be very insightful uh, and I think you're going to keep getting the benefit of great Bible teaching. Uh, from one of us and um, some entertaining conversation <laughs> from the other. That'll keep Thank happening. You, Jeff. That was very complimentary. Yeah. Uh-huh. Of you. Sure. That's what I meant. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's really cool. It's going to be cool. I'm, I'm super excited and, about and it. And that's coming on September 19th. September 19th. So we've got this week and next week. And then after that, HC Daily will be archived and we're moving into the yep. Daily Bible Guys. Yep. Okay. So uh, you should be able to get information here pretty soon. I think the new landing page will open up here in another couple of days at uh, thebibleguys.com is what's coming up. So you'll be able to at least sign up to make sure that you get the daily reminders that it's coming. So that's cool. cool. Okay, so we are in Luke chapter 14, and Jesus tells a a story that is just a real challenge with regard to how God feels about the world and what God's intent is for bringing us into fellowship with him. And he's talking about a big feast. So here you go. Jesus said, hearing this, A man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it'll be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. And Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. And one said, I've just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen. I want to try them out. Please excuse me. And another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And after the servant had done this, he reported, There's still room for more. So his master said, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will even get the smallest taste of my banquet. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's it's a great story. And uh, it's got a pretty clear meaning, I think. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> culturally, I, I have a note here in my Life Application Study Bible mm-hmm. uh, on the verses, and, and uh, it's a pretty cool, insightful yeah, it note. Yep. It says, the custom at this time was to send two invitations to the party, the first to announce the event, and the second to tell the guests that, the ev- that everything was ready. The guests in Jesus' story insulted the host 
by making excuses when he issued the second invitation. In Israel's history, God's first invitation came from Moses and the prophets. The second came from his son, Jesus Christ. The religious leaders accepted the first invitation. They believed that God had called them to be his people, but they insulted God by refusing to accept his son. Thus, as the master of the, in the story sent the servant into the streets to invite those into his banquet, God sent his son to a whole world of people in need to tell them that God's kingdom have arrived and was ready for them. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's super insightful about the Moses part, right? So the first and the second invitation. And and uh, I guess the big picture, you know, God sees the big picture always. He can't help but he's, yeah. he's God. So that's that's super insightful. Whenever I think of this story, I think about it in both terms. I think about, first of all, salvation. Yes. Uh, for those who uh, continually hear the gospel and they eventually make too many excuses about why they're not, you know, why they're not going to pay attention because life is more important than the invitation of God. And then I also think about those who are believers, and I'm not sure if the application was meant for that or not, but it's true. Uh, God invites us to a, you know a different way of living all the time. He invites us, to, uh, you know, he, through the power of conviction. He has so many invitations in our lives, and we can also miss out on those just because we don't pay attention to them. Right, right. I think that um, this passage really kind of, you know, there's the marriage supper of the Lamb that's coming, and I think that's kind of what this guy's referencing. Not mm-hmm. that he understood all of that, but that there would be some great banquet in heaven. Um, that would just be partly it's the extravagance of a wealthy person to throw a giant banquet. That That's pretty incredible. And so that's hinting at what God is, is he's extravagantly generous to others. But there's an expectation that when you're invited, you will respond and come. Mm-hmm. And then he gets frustrated because the people he wanted um, had all these excuses. So they begin to make excuses. Oh, I bought a field. I can't come. Uh, it's a business transaction. I'm sure you understand this is really important. I'm sorry. Otherwise, I'd, I'd, I'd make it because it's a priority and you're important to me, man. But I, I got this feeling I got to go check it out. Another guy goes, oh, I bought these five teams of oxen and uh, I got to go test them. And, uh, you know, so I've got some business I got to do. I got to get some work around the house done. I got to do these things. I'm just, I'm sorry. My schedule is really difficult. The other guy goes, I just got married. I can't come. She won't let me come. <laughs> Which is, as a matter of fact, in the King James, it says, I've married a bride, so I can't come. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> right? Um, it's so funny. She won't let me come. So uh, a lot of times it's a relationship stuff. And what we do, I think a lot of times, we know what we should do. We know what God wants from us. But we just go, God understands. My schedule's really busy. God understands I got some business stuff I got to do. God understands I got some family stuff in the way. And God doesn't understand, right? We're kind of imposing our expectation that the king who has given this incredible invitation will understand why we're going to blow him off this time. Like our priorities are bigger than his priorities. Mm. And that Jesus is making this expectation that you align your priorities with the king. But then he goes on and he goes, well, fine. Then listen, it's not about the elite. It's not about the specially chosen. Anybody can come. Go get them. And then my house isn't full. Bring some more. Right. So it says he goes and gets all the people that everybody else would ignore. Right. So they came and they brought the 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 poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. Jesus isn't trying to say those people are less. Jesus is talking to a society who thought they were less. Right. And so he's actually saying that the king elevates them. He's not making them less. This king elevates them and goes, fine. They're the ones who respond and this is better. So uh, then he goes on and says, but I still have room. Now go find everybody behind the hedges, the people working out there, all the ignored people, go get them too. And so God is saying, I don't play favorites. A lot of times we think that, you know, I'm elite or I have reason why God, well, no wonder God likes me. I get it why he's frustrated with others, but why wouldn't he like me? And God's saying, I don't play favorites. Listen, I give you an invitation. If you don't respond, I'm going to move on. And that's, that's pretty substantial. Yeah, and I think I think that for me, the main thing I walk away with is the importance and how we should view God's invitation. Mm-hmm. God's invitation is more important than anything else we have going on in our lives, and ultimately, obviously, that's salvation. Yes, uh, you know, getting into heaven. But then, even beyond that, every single invita- invitation, when God invites me to an opportunity, 
to be a part of something. And, and by the way, we don't have to be a part of every opportunity that comes along. But I'm talking about when, when I know in my heart that God wants me to be a part of that opportunity. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, you'll hear an opportunity and you'll be like, yeah, it's not for me. But then sometimes you hear an opportunity and you're like, I know for a fact that God is saying you need to be a part of that. But then we find excuses or we justify and we say, oh, I just don't have time for that for these 10 reasons. And so the importance of God's invitation should be viewed as the most important invitation of all. Yeah. You know, a lot of times um, when we think about doing things our way, you know, let, let, let's just take relational advice, for example. Right. So, uh, you know, I recently visited a home where, uh, you know, th- this guy was having trouble and still is having trouble in his relationship and his marriage. And he's responding a certain way. Okay. And he knows already what God says. Mm-hmm. He, know, he knows like, uh, humble yourself. Yeah. Say you apologize. Go to marriage counseling. Why? Because we're supposed to get godly advice. We're supposed to let yeah. people speak into our lives because he needs counseling at this point. So all these different things that he sort of knows is correct. But then the excuse was, uh, well, you know, too busy, mm-hmm. all these different things. Yeah, my business is away. I just bought five ox and I got to test them out. Yeah, yeah. I just and, bought a field. And, and in this case, he's he's saying things like, uh, mm-hmm. "Well, you know, you don't understand her, and 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 my yeah. practice, you know, my my." And anyway, I married doesn't a wife, and she won't let me come. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. but it, but here's the here's the thing: God's invitation is more important. Yes. So you know, if, if if our highest priority is our relationship with our heavenly Father, and then our second highest priority is our relationship with everybody else. Chief among them would be your spouse. Right, right. And so, you know, it stands pretty high. So that invitation of blessing and, and fulfillment and happiness and, and, and everything that God wants for us stands above every single excuse that he gave me recently. Yeah. So, I, you know, that's just one example. Uh, there are so many different examples. When God invites us to, to be a part of a life of joy and blessing, just consider it the most important invitation you can come across. For somebody who's sitting on the fence about giving their life to Christ, in you know, accepting his salvation, God's invitation is the most important event in your life. Right. When God invites you to take a, another step with him and go further in your faith, God's invitation is the most important invitation in your life. When God invites you to serve others, when God invites you to step up your ministry impact and serving um, God's in, in, invitation is the most important invitation. So sometimes people say, how do I know that, that it's God? Well, where did the invitation come from? Well, you know, uh, 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 a good godly friend, or uh, when I was reading my Bible, or I heard this announcement, and I thought, oh, that could be me. Then from there, my heart, I started wondering, gee, is that me? Is that supposed to be for me? Am I supposed to respond to that? Is that... So if you keep coming back to this idea of, was that God, and... Uh, is that for me? It reminds me of Samuel, where God keeps calling Samuel when Samuel's a boy, mm. and he goes into Eli. Say, hey, Eli, did you call me? And Eli's like, No, man, go back to bed. So he goes back to bed. Then God speaks to the little boy Samuel again. Samuel, Samuel. He wakes up and he runs back to Eli. Eli, what, were you talking to me? Eli's like, No. Finally, after like the third time, he goes, Oh, wait a minute, that might be God. Right. If you keep coming back to the same thing, and it's something that would honor God. It's something that would serve people well. It's something that would take your life's commitment to the next level. You test that once or twice or three times. If it's still there, it's probably a God thing. God's trying to capture your attention. And I think a lot of people finally get to so accustomed to making excuses that they never really step in. And Jesus is saying here, there's a moment when the invitation stops. Yeah. Now, for salvation, that invitation stops when you stop breathing breath. I believe that God leaves the door open for everybody. He's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. I, I believe that while you're breathing breath, the opportunity to respond to Christ is always there. But when it comes to a lot of the other things as far as you know, stepping out and serving Him, there is a moment, I think, sometimes where God goes, okay, I'm going to rescind that invitation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use somebody else. I'm going to use somebody that you would think was blind or crippled or, or less than. Mm-hmm. And God says, hey, listen, I can be glorified with everybody. I'm going to elevate everybody that's willing. You know, one of my one of my favorite stories that I have is is I uh, sometimes I go to uh, environments alone. That's not the favorite part of my story, yeah. but I'm just setting up the story, saying I was alone in a B Dubs eating, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm such a high raging extrovert yeah. that that sometimes I find uh, you know I find it comforting to just be by myself in, a, in an environment. Mm-hmm. Many people are like, "Oh, I'm so 
I can't believe you go into a restaurant alone. Yeah, well, you're just not secure like I am. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. I'd throw it on the ground. Well, we're all grateful that you do it. It gives everybody a break. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just totally kidding. So I walked into the B-dubs. I'm sitting down. I'm having a great time watching football on the screen, and I'm eating these, you know, wings or whatever. And then um, there was a man that came in by himself, sat next to me, and I felt very clearly like God said, I want you to pray with him. Mm. Well, I, I had a, I, we were talking about the lions, right? I mean, but you don't pray with a stranger. You just don't. It is super weird to, yeah. to, to build that bridge, you know? And so anyway, we're, we're just casually talking and then, and then God says, you need to pray with him. And then, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, well, that's not from God. And so I'm sitting there eating my wings and like three wings later, I really feel like you need to pray with this person. I'm like, God, you've got to be kidding me because that is weird and creepy, but Nevertheless, that invitation was there. Had I got up and left the restaurant without doing this, I think the invitation would have passed. Mm -hmm. And God might have used somebody else. Sure. But anyway, I, I looked over and I just said, hey, dude, I said, I know we've only talked about the lions. I know this is pretty weird, but is there anything going on that you want me to pray about for you? And I know I, know I don't even know you, but, uh, and in this case, I did tell him I was a pastor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because... I had to have sort of yeah, like an sure. excuse, credibility, credibility yeah, to yeah. ask this strange question. Uh -huh. And I said, I'm just a pastor. And I just really feel like, you know, and he looked over at me and he goes, I can't believe you just asked me that. I said, why? So he starts crying. And I mean, I'm, I don't mean like glossy eyed. I mean, like actually crying, like put his napkin over his face yeah. and crying. And he said, I just left the doctor's office and I was just told that I had cancer. Wow. And he said, and I have to go home and tell my wife and my kids. He said, and I didn't want to go home and I didn't want to face that moment. So I didn't know what else to do. So I stopped in this restaurant and I'm just sitting here thinking, how am I going to do that? And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Wow. And so I said, okay, well, let me pray with you in every way. So I prayed in every way. I prayed obviously for his health. I prayed mm -hmm. for the moment for him to tell his wife and kids. I, I encouraged him to get involved in, you know, blah, 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 blah. All, all, yeah, the, yeah. all the advice that I can give to this man. Um, I didn't ask him for his number. I invited him to church. Uh, Quite honestly, I didn't hear from him. He, at least if he does come to church, he didn't come up to me. But um, And so I, I will always wonder if that made a, a big lasting difference in his life, if he's still alive. I don't know any of those things, but it's not my job to know. Right. It's my job to pray with him. That's yes. what God wanted me to do. Right, right. And so I have that story now and this experience that I was there at a critical time for somebody. Yeah. You know, and, and by the way, not just not just to pray with him in that moment, but to reveal to him that God's real. Yes. And that God and that God does things that are beyond coincidence. Yeah, you know that that made an impact on him. Yeah. yeah. You, it, you have to know it did. Yeah, yeah, and I do. Yeah. And I, to be honest with you, I get emotional just thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because it was, it was such a really cool moment for me to know that mm -hmm. God spoke to me. I thought he did. I was pretty sure he did. And then when I found that out, I'm like, yep. Yeah, I sure know he did. I used to work at Marriott, and uh, I just really had a burden in my heart that I wanted to share the gospel with my coworkers. And uh, pretty quickly, I got promoted a couple times. Next thing you know, I've got like I'm only in my 20s, but I've got 20 something people working under me. And so I started uh, one by one, the the ones I was closest to first, mm -hmm. and I I tried to develop friendships with everybody. But one by one, um, I would go to them and and say. Uh, Hey, I, this might be an odd thing. You know, we'd be chit-chatting or sitting at lunch or whatever and say, but uh, I've been praying for you. I just want you to know that because I kind of wore my faith on my sleeve anyways. Everybody knew that I was a Christian. I've I just been praying for you, and um, I've just been praying God bless you, that God would, would continue to, you know, to be real in your life. But I'm really curious, how can I pray specifically for you? And it was incredible mm -hmm. how many people. I didn't have one person say that was weird. Everybody would be like, you're praying for me? Really? But I had a relationship with them. Right? right. So it's a little bit different on that. But what I wanted, to, and what it did is it led into meaningful, several meaningful spiritual conversations that, because most people aren't ready for spiritual conversations, but they're open to prayer. And then it was amazing how many people then it became like, Jeff's the guy we go to. Hey, thanks for praying for me, man. My marriage is tightening up. Or thanks for praying for me. I just got the promotion, whatever. And uh, it just left it open that I, I kind of became the chaplain to the whole team. Mm. Right. And uh, in that area, and it was just by being willing to, to pray. So uh, it doesn't always have to be weird. You just have to find a way to make it 
as natural right. as possible. Right. But in that situation, that's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. So in the this fact situation, that you had a relationship with him helped. Yeah, yeah. As but but to... I also felt like God was saying, this is the time. Because I only worked there for a couple of years, and then I was gone. So uh, it wasn't like it was going to last forever. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we think, we, we'll tell God, yeah, I hear what you're saying, just not now. Right. <laughs> because right. these people are, aren't saying that they will never, ever go to another banquet. They're just saying, I'm not going to make it to this one. Right. And they've got their excuses. And I think a lot of times we make our excuses like, well, there's all kinds of weird. people think I'm weird. People will think, uh, you know, that uh, I'm not supposed to talk about faith at work, whatever. Mm-hmm. You make all these excuses. Um, and so we, we, we reject this invitation into what God's doing. And then we miss out on all the benefits of it. Um, the other side of it is clearly this is talking about salvation. It, yes. it, really, it really is talking yes. about salvation, clearly. So we're talking <clears throat> about secondary meanings in this passage. Right. But there is a moment when we can no longer respond to the gospel. So don't wait. Don't put that on the shelf. Respond today. Respond that God's inviting you into his kingdom. God's inviting you to have your sins forgiven. God's inviting you to have a right relationship with him. Um, and today's the day to respond. Mm. And uh, I think that's just incredibly important for us to not put that off. The most important invitation is Christ's invitation. Well, I, I don't know if anybody would even be listening to this podcast if they weren't a Christian. But uh, I've learned over the years never to assume, right? Oh, right. Right. So, so there are people. I who, just assume everybody's not a Christian until they've affirmed they are. Well, yeah, that's right? probably yeah, yeah, a really yeah, good yeah, way yeah. to live too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but if you're listening to the podcast, or maybe you're sharing it with somebody, um, you know, and maybe you're listening and you don't know for certain that you go to heaven when you died, uh, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. That's right. So, mm-hmm. so today's the time where you just set aside all your doubts and all your questions or all those petty things that you think that you need to have solved, you know, before you move on. Because the Bible says with childlike faith, what we do is we just we, we, we just say, God, I believe that I cannot get to heaven by myself. I believe that you died on a cross for one reason, to pay for my sins so that I can go to heaven. And I invite you to I, I invite you to come into my life and my heart. I invite I, I'll try my best to put you first in everything I do. And if you say that not in a magic prayer, not in a formulated way, but just with, with a simple heart intent, confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart, the Bible says you're going to go to heaven. You're going to be saved. Yeah, that's right. I think that's a good place to end. Yeah, it sure, it certainly is. Yeah. So, hey, uh, hopefully that's your invitation. Uh, it, you know what? If, if you if you pray that prayer and you say those things, text us and let us know. Yeah, that'd be great. In our comments. L- leave it in the comments. Yep. Yeah. We'll see you next time on HC Daily. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us spread the word by liking this episode and sharing it on your social media platforms. Be sure to leave a comment and review, and don't forget to give us five stars. When you do, you help us reach even more people who need a daily devotional like HC Daily. If you'd like to hear more from Chris and Jeff, they're both teaching pastors at Heritage Church located in Southeast Michigan. You can get more of their messages by clicking on the Messages tab at heritagechurch.com. Be sure to join us again soon for another episode of HC Daily.